Hi there, my name is Doug Milburn. I'm uh, co-founder and vice president of 45 Drives. So I'm here once again because our people were kind enough to let me do another video. I get excited about stuff, want to do a video and they let me. So uh, uh, this video today is a subject I've talked about uh, before. So it's about uh, people with uh, what I'm going to call ordinary sized data sets. Okay, what word is that? Ordinary, is that a scientific technical term? Absolutely not. Where do I get the word ordinary? Why don't I have a better term for it? Well, because of 45 drives, a lot of what we do, it, we make high density servers, and uh, a lot of what we do is look after very large data storage needs of people that are multiple petabytes. Okay. And it's a niche, and it's a niche we love, and we serve very, very well. People are trying to store things like uh, post-production video, uh, surveillance video, scientific data. We do a lot of scientific data, uh, medical imaging, brain scanning, uh, computational fluid dynamics. Uh, we do data sets for uh, large enterprise. Uh, a very large enterprise has very large data sets. That's what we've done in the past. Okay. But we've got another thing that we do as well, which is we look after people with ordinary size data sets. So I'm going to do what I did before. I'm going to talk about us at 45 Drives and, and its other division, Protocase, um, and talk about our ordinary size data sets. And are we truly ordinary? Well, there's no such thing as ordinary. Uh, I always liked the joke when I was growing up, uh, you know, kind of a geeky science engineering kid, and uh, I always wanted to be ordinary. So now I'm actually able to get a camera and, and, and talk about myself as an organization as ordinary. So what do you mean by ordinary? Uh, we have about 24 terabytes of data, uh, of, of our enterprise data. We have some more stuff in, that's in our video uh, production set, our, our, our raw files for video. We have more than that, but 24 terabytes is our, our, our main data set. That's our operational database, all our customer data, every marketing project we ever did, all our product design, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. All the kind of data that you think you'd have in a company like ours. Okay. 24 terabytes. Ooh, today I can get an 18 terabyte hard drive just off the shelf, ordinary, and you go, it's not huge in that sense, is it? Why on earth would I be talking about clustering for uh, a, a company that has 24 terabytes, wouldn't I just buy a small server and throw on a few hard drives? No, I wouldn't. And, and no, we don't. We use Ceph clustering in our enterprise and we use it to look after that data set. Now that data set, that's everything that keeps us running. Okay, there's 275 people work inside the organization. Uh, their livelihood and the well-being of our customers who depend on us depends on the, us having that data set and being able to access that data set when we need it. Okay? So it's not just the size of the data. That's a really, really important thing to understand when you're looking at that and saying, should I cluster or should I go with ordinary solutions for my data storage, single server solutions for it. Okay, so let me talk about why we've chosen to use clustering to look after our data in, in our enterprise here in our 24 terabyte data set, 24 terabyte and growing data set. Um, Reason number one is security. Okay. This data, I've already said, it's critical to us. Uh, and it's critical to us and we need to make sure that that data is safe. Uh, you know, biggest uh, threat we would worry about, I think in reality, would be a, uh, would be a hard drive failure. Okay. So how do we deal with that? Redundancy. Uh, redundancy is built into Ceph clustering and you get to define it, you get to define it at a software level. Uh, what other threats would I worry about? Uh, well, what happens if uh, the proverbial meteorite falls from the sky and strikes our, 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 uh, our server room? And uh, Ceph clustering, we have a solution to that. In fact, we're in multiple buildings, we spread our cluster out. So we're covered over a small meteor strike. Uh, we still move our data off site on a regular basis. Our data is critical to us. It's got to move off site if something ever happened and wiped all, all of our facilities. I still want us to have access to our data. Um, other threat to data is, well, there's, just, there's control of access is another, another threat. Uh, beauty of Ceph is Ceph allows you to set up storage spaces called storage pools and that can get accessed uh, on, on your network. And they 
they live in software. It's called software defined storage. So we have our, you know, for example, at our organization, we have a storage space we call public that contains most of the working uh, documents of the company. We have other very specific higher security um, uh, data sets. Example, our, our HR drive. We also do stuff with customers that's, uh, that's secure for things like uh, control of goods and ITAR. They get rolled away uh, I into a very, very high security section of our, uh, of our storage. Anyway, we can do that very, very easily. So we got that covered. Um, so the other threat to data security that we see is something like the example of crypto locking. What happens if something malicious, it could be a virus, it could be an internal attack, it could be all kinds of things, uh, cyber threats destroys our data set. Or what happens if just somebody's clumsiness? Uh, we had a senior manager in here uh, uh, last week uh, happen to accidentally delete some important files. And uh, so we have something called snapshotting to talk about, which I think is a mission critical feature of this too, that helps us with data security. So those data security issues, incredibly important to us. Next thing, high availability. So high availability is the real magic when you move into clustering. Uh, it's something I observed a long time ago uh, on how dependent we've become on our IT infrastructure. Basically, pretty much our whole company will shut down within, oh, probably anywhere from minutes up to maybe half an hour if our storage infrastructure goes down or other parts of our IT infrastructure goes down. Uh, you notice it right away. Uh, I've many times been in my office over the, the years and next thing you know, I hear the noise level go up outside. I look outside to where I uh, have a bunch of cubicles and you start seeing all these heads up above and somebody asking each other, they're going, uh, is the network down? Uh, what's going on? I can't get blah, 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 blah. And, uh, and the noise gets louder and louder and louder until the IT people will go in there as an emergency and fix it all up and get everybody back to work. Uh, storage infrastructure, it's really easy. Put in a distributed Ceph cluster and uh, a server can go down and uh, it's no problem. Um, so that's important from an operational point of view. It, it's just, it's game changing. It's not important, it's game changing. You just feel totally different about your IT infrastructure when you have high availability. But the other side of it uh, are IT people. Uh, I was just talking to our IT manager just before I did the, this video. And uh, it changes their lives. Okay, server goes down. You get a notification. Then he goes, oh, I got to do some maintenance on the server. Hmm, what am I doing right now? Is that a more important? Yeah, I keep doing what I'm doing. I'll fix that server when I get to it. It's not an emergency anymore. Yeah. Uh, you got to do maintenance in a server. Good, take it down, shut it off. System keeps on running, everybody keeps operating. No need to come in on evenings and weekends and that kind of stuff, you don't have to do it anymore. Anyway, he loves it so much. Uh, his comment to me, he says, you know, we had to put in more storage. He says, I'm never putting in another single server unless some idiot boss orders me to. And I said, oh, you're not talking about me, are you? And, but anyway, <laughs> I don't know, maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. But um, Performance, um, getting your files out fast. Uh, this applies to any single server with RAID arrays, but it, 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 it's Ceph as well. Uh, reading data out in parallel. Uh, when you tune things up, you can get data out onto your network faster than you can read off a single hard drive inside, uh, inside a local machine. So once you, and you need to move up to at least 10 gigabit networking to really feel this, otherwise you'd be network bottlenecked. But uh, your performance can, can be better than operating off a local mechanical hard drive or a local SSD, a local single SSD for that matter. Uh, performance is wonderful. Uh, snapshotting, I already do snapshotting. Snapshotting, we use snapshotting extensively. Snapshotting takes essentially zero time, just basically copies out a, 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 a copy of the file table at the moment and then just preserves any blocks necessary to access that, uh, th that file table. Likewise, to restore something from the snapshot, it's pretty much instant. Um, so we use snapshotting, we snapshot hourly, we snap snapshot daily, and we snapshot weekly. And uh, what it means is when my, uh, my manager comes along and says I accidentally deleted files, we go, great, when did you do that? And we go to back to snapshot before, we grab a copy for him and it's just, it's almost instant. So snapshotting is, is, is really game changing as well. So I could go on about more elements of clustering, but that's the major reasons why we use clustering. 
So why am I talking to you today? Uh, I am talking to you because we've introduced our new line of uh, four bay and eight bay storage servers. Why are we 45 drives doing something that size? Well, re really, really simply put, uh, we've become a provider of full clustering storage solutions to people. What's full solution? Solution would be servers, hard drives, open source software, installation, and ongoing support. Everything you need uh, to put in Ceph clustering and move to this next level and, uh, and, and enjoy all those benefits. Uh, it happens on a, under, a whole different, under an open source business model and an open hardware business model as well. Okay? So you're not locked in, you're not locked into a cost structure, proprietary cost structure, and, and any, anybody who's uh, priced though, uh, other alternatives under the, the legacy proprietary business models uh, will find that uh, the prices are, are quite radically higher in most cases. Um, so along comes our customer set, people like us, who have ordinary sized data sets. Okay? And uh, yeah, we've always dealt with that by providing them with our smallest machines, which are AV15s. 15 drive bays um, in each, uh, start off with three of them. It's a cost effective solution, lots of people running it. Advantage, lots of headroom for expansion. But it's generally more than you need and it's more than you need in the uh, foreseeable future. So uh, we just thought we'd put together an entry point that allows people to come in uh, and enjoy all these benefits and do it at a, at a much smaller level. Okay. Another uh, important benefit of Ceph clustering is scalability. Uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm old enough, I can think back when I first started with PCs. Uh, we had the early Intel stuff, 8086 and, and the like. Uh, I remember when I bought my first 286 personally when I was uh, actually in grad school at the time, and man, it was pretty exciting to have a computer that had uh, you know full 16 bits uh, thrown through it. But those were the old days. Anyway, Intel architecture, uh, and going way back before me, uh, there was a decision made by Intel to set up their memory pointers such that you could only access one megabyte of memory. One, that's a megabyte. Not a gigabyte, but back at the time, the view was uh, who would ever have more than a megabyte of RAM? So, and of course, we all know what happened. So, uh, having limitations built in in your scalability is not a great, uh, not a great thing. And Intel, the, the architecture went through a lot of backflips to, to move us up to a full 32-bit architecture uh, and beyond. So, anyway, beauty of Ceph clustering. Start off with Ceph clustering, and whatever you start off with, you want to expand it. Uh, Put another server in the rack, plug it into your network. Um, you know, it's been configured with software, and then just uh, configure it into the system with a couple of switches set on, on your dashboard. Uh, it'll fill data will drain down on the existing servers, fill up on the other server. It'll all self-level, and now I have a broader cluster. My broader cluster is more secure and is faster than my original cluster. It's 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 absolutely a beautiful thing scalability-wise. So. Example, let's go to these, uh, this, this nice uh, four bay server that I have here. Um, it's one U, takes up three U total rack space for your Ceph cluster. You get all the benefits. Uh, what do you get for size? Uh, about, uh, well, let's, let's say, for example, you decided to put 18 terabyte hard drives, sort of the upper off the shelf limit on, uh, on enterprise hard drives today. Uh, put four of those in each of those, you're gonna get about 72 terabytes raw per node. We have three nodes. Uh, out of three nodes, we're gonna get 216 terabytes raw in your cluster. Okay. How much usable storage space do you get out of that? Depends on how you set up your storage pools and what rules you use for redundancy. Don't forget the beauty is you set up your storage pools uh, in software and you can have as many of them as you want operating inside your cluster. Uh, typically, we would encourage people to set up in a starter cluster like that a two plus one eraser coding. So you're getting an efficient storage efficiency of two thirds. So you'd end up with about a hundred, just a little over 140 terabytes raw. That's a lot of space. Okay? Uh, you can keep a data set like our 24 terabyte data set. Uh, you can go about, uh, what's that, about ballpark, five times that before you have to touch anything. You've got lots of space to set up other pools for other purposes. 
uh, and you can do everything I said on it. Just a great way to go. So anyway, if you are a person in an organization that has an ordinary size data set and you're interested in Ceph clustering, uh, we have a wonderful uh, right-sized option for you now. So if you're interested at all, please get in touch with us. Uh, pop on our website. Um, there's a live chat on our website. Uh, our email address there at info at 45drives.com will get an email to us or use that old-fashioned telephone for you. those of you that still like to talk in person, like, like me, I'm an old guy, I like that still. But um, anyway, hope to hear from you and uh, love to hear your comments in this video.